Commander. Just like it sounds, our sharpshooters engage enemy targets with pinpoint accuracy from extreme range. They're also trained in pistol marksmanship for the occasional close encounter. Hey everybody, Christopher Odd here, and this is the last of five videos that have been demonstrating each class in XCOM 2. And today we're going to be looking at the sharpshooter class. Uh, the two archetypes of the sharpshooter class allow for really wild variations in playstyle. Uh, there are a few skills that make a return from previous XCOM games, but there's so many amazing and flexible new ones that I think you can really build out either a pure sniper build or a gunslinger, and both can be incredibly useful depending on your playstyle and mission types, actually. As with the previous video, you're able to click on any of the abilities to the left and jump directly to that skill's location in the video. I'll be starting with a sniper archetype, then I'll move into the sharpshooter side of things. And since this is the last class that I'll be demonstrating, if you've seen all the videos you'll have seen all the skills that are available to be chosen in these skill trees. And if you have any specific questions about any of the interactions between certain classes and skills, just let me know and I'll try to make some videos demonstrating those interactions or skill combos. Uh, the main soldier in this video is a man named Wesley. Here we go. First up, we have a returning skill from Enemy Unknown and Enemy Within. It's called Squad Sight. How it works is you can target enemies within squad mate's vision, uh, provided that you have line of sight to the target. Uh, this is usually best utilized from high ground so that you can ensure that those lines of sight are wide open. And there is no limit to how far it reaches, but a significant change from the previous games is that there is an aim penalty that accumulates with distance. So it doesn't get used on Overwatch shots. There's a separate ability for that altogether. And people have asked whether a Phantom Ranger slash Sniper combo would work out well. Maybe, if your sniper's really amazing with aim and has some really significant weapon upgrades, it might be useful, but I think more often than not, because of the range penalty, you're not gonna find it that viable. The first selectable skill is called Long Watch, and this allows for Overwatch to trigger with Squad Sight. It's very simple, but it still has an aim penalty for Overwatching and for Distance, so it's something that you'll have to keep in mind when you're planning. Deadeye is like the headshot of old, and how it works is that you take a small aim penalty for a significant damage boost. It does reduce the overall hit chance by 25%, which is a pretty hefty amount, but it increases your base damage by 50%, so that will obviously scale with upgraded weapons and the like. Has a two turn cooldown, so you can use it pretty frequently, and if you do land a hit, it's gonna hurt. Death from Above is a really nice skill for a sniper build out. It allows for a little bit of extra mobility. How it works is you can kill an enemy at a lower elevation than yourself with your sniper rifle and it only costs one action and doesn't end your turn. So if you need to relocate after you take somebody out, this is fantastic. What am I doing with this? Hoffentlich lohnt sich das. The kill zone skill is very unique, in my opinion. Uh, how it works is that you take a reaction shot against any enemy that moves or attacks within a cone of fire. Uh, there's no limit to the amount of shots outside of your ammo counts. It uses squad sight, even if long watch isn't selected, and it has a three turn cooldown. Combos really nicely with expanded magazine weapon upgrades for obvious reasons. 
Uh, it's important to note though that the squad site penalties will still be in play, so you're not guaranteed to hit everything, but if you do, uh, you're dishing out a lot of damage, just only dependent on your ammo count. Steady hands is great if you're the type of player that likes to put their sniper up in a perch, not move them that often, and just pick targets off. And how it works is that if you don't move in the last turn, you gain plus 10 to your aim and plus 10 to your critical chance. And at the Colonel level, you have the Serial skill that's available to you. It's a chain shot ability and how it works is for every kill you make with your sniper rifle, your actions get refunded to you. So each successful kill does result in a reduction to crit chance though. Uh, and there's a four turn cooldown. So if you have a whole bunch of enemies at low health, this could really be a big benefit. Your base damage doesn't change, but that crit chance change does have an impact. Now moving over to the gunslinger side of the tree. This is really a different approach to this sharpshooter class and I personally really love it. Uh, for this video we have upgraded weaponry to hopefully show off what a gunslinger is really capable of so just keep that in mind when you see some of the damage output. Return fire is the first skill and it works like this. When targeted by enemy fire, you're going to automatically fire back with your pistol once per turn. It doesn't trigger when shot with overwatch, but can be triggered by melee and other area of effect attacks. Next up we have lightning hand, and I'll just let you know that the next couple of clips are actually all for one turn. I'll split them up for the demo, but I'll return later to show you the full unedited version so you can see how all of these things combo together rather nicely. Lightning hands works by firing a pistol at your target, and the attack does not cost an action. So it's a free pistol shot basically. You can use it in a gunslinger build, but it also works quite well in a sniper build as you can just use your pistol and then your rifle in the same turn. It has a three turn cooldown. Next up we have the quick draw ability, and this enables you to fire your pistol with your first action without ending your turn. And if you're building out a gunslinger specific archetype, I think this skill is absolutely essential. Combos really nicely with lightning hand, your regular pistol shot, and most of the other gunslinger abilities. Next up we have a really powerful skill, it's called face off. How this works is you're able to fire once at every visible enemy with your pistol. Because pistol doesn't have an ammo count, the number of shots is unlimited. There's a three turn cooldown, and it's best used when positioning really aggressively so that you have sight on as many enemies as possible, and when you're running a pure gunslinger build. The next skill can actually be used in either tree really, uh, but it is on the gunslinger side and it's called aim. 
Very simple. How it works is when you hunker down, it's going to give you plus 20 aim to the first shot of the following turn, and it affects both your sniper rifle or your pistol. And last but certainly not least, we have Fanfire. How Fanfire works is you fire your pistol three times at the same target. Each shot is calculated independently for your hit or miss chance. There's a three turn cooldown and Fanfire with upgraded weaponry is capable of dealing out a lot of damage if all three attacks hit. So a little earlier I mentioned that a lot of these moves came from one turn with one of the gunslingers. And I'm going to show you that clip unedited right now so that you can see what a gunslinger is truly capable of when it combos its skills together in a pretty strong way. So how would I build out the sharpshooter class? Um, my personal preference is to build a traditional sniper early on with one caveat really. Uh, I would usually choose lightning hands over deadeye just because I like the free shots and the free damage essentially. Uh, the cooldown is one turn longer than deadeye but I think I could live with that in most scenarios. However, I do imagine that as the campaign progresses, I would probably prefer a more rigid gunslinger just to supplement a sniper on our missions. And with upgraded weaponry, they're really capable of dishing out so much damage across multiple targets that it's just stunning. Most of the gunslinger abilities have a three turn cooldown or less. So in a perfect world, you can mop up a revealed pot or two before having to worry about cooldown times impacting you. So that's the sharpshooter class, everybody. Thanks again for the ongoing support. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I've had a lot of fun making these videos. Uh, it's really reassuring just to see them so well received. And I have a question now for you guys. And you've probably seen all of the classes at this point. You've seen all of the skills that are available. How do you guys think that you would build out a four, five, or maybe even your six person squad? I'd be really interested just to hear some of your personal preferences. I've been playing quite a bit. Um, I don't even want to admit the number of hours I have in the preview build. It's rather embarrassing. But uh, I have my personal preferences. But for you guys that haven't played and are just kind of in theory crafting mode, what are your thoughts? I'd be really interested to hear that. Have a good one, guys. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you next time.